disco. This ain't no country club neither. This is RPA. <laughs> Hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody, to Oh La La in the Dungeon, Season 2, Episode 6. Woohoo! How is everybody? Doing well? Oh, I'm doing great. Well, we have some exciting things to do on this podcast and an exciting guest, but we'll get to that before... Before we do that, we are going to talk about what we did and what the episode will be about. Yes. So today we are interviewing Rick Plotz. Is that how you say your last name? Plotz. 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 And before we give the big introduction, I'll just tell you guys that he is the owner and operator of the Bell Garden. And we'll get into what he does in a second. Stay tuned. Um, then, of course, Big Daddy will be dropping it on us. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> dropping it heavy today. <laughs> We have our restaurants of the week. Oh, yes. And perhaps a funny round of questions. Yes, yes. We'll see what happens. This is, uh, you know, on the fly. We'll Pretty see usual. what happens. Anyway, um, what you been up to, you Liv? Oh, my Lord. As usual, a lot, but I'll keep it brief. Uh, the first thing that I did with Liz was we rode in a Cessna Cardinal RG, which is a very small plane. It was so fun. It was really cool. My classmate from high school's husband, Toto, shout out to him, Yay. is a pilot from Amsterdam, and he took Liz and I for a joyride around Richmond. And I was scared of flying because I had a really bad experience the last time I flew, which was riding over the Gulf of Mexico after... Uh, A trip to Playa del Carmen. Um, It was terrifying. Um, But the trip that we took was thrilling. It was not scary. It was at first, but it was a blast. It was my first time seeing Richmond in an an aerial view because I've never flown in Richmond. I've only flown from New York, where I'm from. Uh, We also met the man flying the banner plane over the Folk Fest in Richmond that said, vote no to the casino. (laughs) But he had no idea what he was even flying. Remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. What am I flying? He was circling nonstop, though. It was hilarious. Yeah. Um, and then, so Liz, what did you think of the flight? Oh my gosh, it was so fun and it was so pretty. Um, it was like the perfect day to do a flight. Like I think in the morning it was kind of rainy, but it had cleared up and the way the sun was shining on Richmond, it looked sunset. like Mecca. It really yeah, the, did. The pictures looked amazing. Yeah, That's it was really cool. Yeah. Um, such a cool experience. I feel like we've been getting to do the coolest things. Uh, we didn't die when he let Olivia take the wheel. Oh, yeah. He let me fly the plane. I was plane. like, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> he let me fly the plane. I was terrified, but I like flew it up in the air, flew it down in the air, to the right, to the left. We did a couple rolls. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I went up, she up upside down. No. Did, you, uh, uh, did you dive bomb? <laughs> no. Thank, thank God. Thank the Lord. I was, did not want to fly that plane, but he made me. Okay, number two. I finally saw. Uh, Guar. <laughs> yeah. And I, uh, if you don't know, Guar is a local Richmond, very famous metal band. They dress up as monsters. They have their different names and they throw fake blood on you. And we got soaked. But I went with my friend Sarah um, and they put on a effing show. Let me tell you, we got drenched in bile and fake blood. I wore a wig because I dye my hair blonde and I heard that it stains your hair. So I wore a wig. <laughs> Uh, the music, the costumes, the crowd, the openers, and the theatrics were so good. And they had me laughing so hard because they're really funny on stage. They tell jokes. They, like, had Joe Biden up there, and they chapped his head off. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've got a question. Does Guar stand for anything, or is it just a, a word that they came up with? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, like, a nerd, a Guar nerd. But I okay. met... A few. Let I'll have to you. ask a Guar nerd um, about that. All I know is growing up, their name was carved into every desk at Tucker <laughs> High School. Okay? That's <laughs> I'm funny. literally everyone. 
Um, okay, and also they had an opener that I have to shout out because they were so freaking good called X Cops. They're kind of like the same concept as Guar. Like they're very theatrical. They're dressed up as cops and they like harass people and they bring people up on stage and they were like, they had fake prisoners and they were like beating them up. It was so funny. It's just funny. They're, it's very comedic. Okay, number three. We went to Gimme Gimme Disco at the Canal Indeed Club. Indeed, we Ooh, did. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we dressed up as the Playboy crew. So uh, all I got to say is Gimme 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 a better DJ. I know. I know. That guy sucked bad. ass. It, it was it's, bad. <laughs> no, don't okay, say that. Okay, so guys, this is the scene. It's like he's doing doing a playlist or something, oh, and it's just song after song. <laughs> and then you know? he was randomly like dancing on the stage and bringing other people up, yeah. like trying to do a Hype routine, yeah. but it was not... Working. If I want to see a DJ, I want to see some scratching. I, know, I want yeah. to see him like, actually work, DJ. work the platters. Yeah. But we made the most of it. Our costumes were on point. We were all like a, our costumes all went together. So me and Liz were the Playboy Bunnies. Matt was Hugh Hef. Hugh Hef. And we took Dave along, our old friend. Well, your car our first uh, interview yeah. Yeah. on oh, La. Yeah. Oh my Previous God, yeah. Uh, interview, yeah. I forgot about that. I don't know what he was because he just put on <laughs> sweatpants, sweatpants, and a t-shirt. Well, he said but, he was him, was himself. Uh, oh my God, he did an, an excellent, an alternate job. version of excellent himself. Excellent job, indeed. Okay, Liz, take it away. Um. Well, basically, I did everything you did. <laughs> we also went to a house party two doors down on Saturday night. Olivia came with us because she's part of our costume. She has to. Um. <laughs> We went to our neighbor Ricky's house and Amanda, they got engaged the night before. Yay, congrats, guys. Amanda will be a guest November 30th, so um, can't wait for that. She's a makeup artist, and damn, she does some cool shit. Her costume was amazing. It really was. She was an alien. It was so cool. It was like Beetlejuice-esque, I thought, with like that color, like the greenish kind of hue. And she did a really good job of it, too. It looked real. Um, and then last night, Matt and I went to the Jasper for the Dia de los Muertos pop-up. And my, oh my, those cocktails were strong. They were fuerte. <laughs> fuerte. Hey, wow, they knocked me out my ass. <laughs> yeah, I actually texted, had a like whole conversation. I woke up this morning, I'm like, I remember none of that. But um, anyway, it was Obviously amazing as usual. You guys will be hearing this on Friday morning, but Friday night you should go there because the fourth is the last day that they'll be doing it. I'm probably going. Yes, it, it's amazing. Every year they close for two days, building up to it. They totally transform the bar. They take the time to put tile. It looks like you know, like Spanish tiles all along the bar, but it's like magnets that they painstakingly yeah. line up. Um, there's a lot of Frida Kahlo pictures. Oh, I love I the like one in the bathroom of the Chihuahua Frida. <laughs> but, I mean, the drinks, of course, are amazing. Abuelita's hot chocolate. Um, the mezcal washed with milk chocolate as a shot. Hails to the yeah. Um, I wanted the queso, but my companions, my compadres, were saving oh, it for dinner. I was all about that queso. I know. No Some trouble. people poo pooed on the party. Mm. They'll remain nameless. <laughs> but seriously, guys, you should check it out. And if you don't make it this year, I'm sure they'll do it again next year. I hope and pray you should check it out then. Um, anything else, Big Daddy? Have we been up to anything else? <sighs> Not that I can think of. But let's introduce this guest. Yes, without further ado. <laughs> All right, today we have Rick Plouts. Is that I say it right this time? Yes. <laughs> Owner and operator of the Bell Garden. The Bell Garden is a wellness business and sound bath facilitator in Richmond, Virginia, combining quartz crystals, curated music, and vocal toning to create a profoundly relaxing meditative experience. And let me tell you guys, we just did it before this episode. I can concur. Oh my gosh, we can barely talk. We're so relaxed. So I feel like I'm in a a different like state of mind. Let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah, but um, after you're done. Yeah. Yeah. So Rick started holding sound baths in December of 2021 at the Triangle Rock Club, and he still does once a month. 
but he holds now holds them all over town in yoga studios, Reiki centers, and privately in clients' homes like ours. Well, Liz is in Matt's, not me, but I could kind of <laughs> live here. Um, in 2018, while he was meditating to music, he began humming and promptly fell asleep. When he woke up, he had an image in his head of sitting on a large concert stage, rigging a crystal bowl, and singing a note in front of a crowd of hundreds. This image has led him to where he is today, and I hope that he has achieved or will achieve, achieve that dream someday. So without further ado, let's welcome Rick. Thank you. Hi, Rick. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Rick. <laughs> okay, Rick, that was freaking awesome. Oh, my gosh. I'm yes. so glad. Uh, it was amazing. So I'll talk a little bit about what I experienced. Yes. Um, I gradually began to feel my entire body like vibrate. It lasted the entire time. Boudreaux, my dog, climbed up with me and I could feel his body vibrating even. Like he like laid down and put his head on my leg. It was so relaxing. Um, I really enjoyed the humming along. I felt like that helped with the vibration. And I felt like I saw an image of a medicine woman dancing and singing off in the distance. So that's what happened to me, Olivia. Um, so I'll talk you through my experience. So we, we sat down on Liz's, well, we laid down on Liz's couch <laughs> and Rick took out some crystals and laid them out. And he began talking about how like life is very stressful in these times. And Amen. basically like being through traffic is like getting attacked by like jungle <laughs> animals in the wild, blah, blah, blah. So we, um, laid down and he began and he was ringing the bowls with the spoon around the bowl. And I, after I settled in, because I was a little distracted by Matt and the dog, oh. uh, but then I finally relaxed. And but Matt was very working diligently on our sound. Oh yeah, baby! Background. Somebody's got to do know. that. The dirty mm-hmm. work. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I had a vision of Liz and I in this beautiful, like crystal clear water underneath, like swimming, like under the water, and there was this beautiful green light shining through the water, and we were kind of like mermaids. We weren't mermaids. Ooh, that's always my dream. I know. <laughs> you would have loved it. <laughs> we're gonna do it. Want to be a mermaid? <laughs> so yes. I love that. Oh my God, thank you. It was amazing. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's interesting because that happens a lot. When that doesn't happen a lot, but people get their own like experiences when they do that, when they go in sound baths, yeah. Like what I was telling you when we started was it puts you in that like liminal state between waking and sleeping. So you're not really awake, you're not really asleep, um, but it kind of it's like the prime spot for meditating. So it looks, it kind of sounds like you all got there. Yes. And then I couldn't tell who was snoring, but you said it was a dog. <laughs> it was Boudreaux. It was not me. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was Boudreaux. <laughs> okay. So before we get into the nitty gritty, we want to know, are you from Richmond? If not, what brought you here? And you did tell us, but we want the audience to know. Mm. Yes. Oh. I grew up in Utah. I'm not Mormon. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. Yes, you are. I know. <laughs> Why? How can that be possible? No. Well, the funny part is like waiting for people to like beat around the bush to try and ask the question without asking the question. Yeah. I, so wait, I just, we like, probably would have straight up asked you. Yeah, I yeah. know. So I just come out with it. I know they're, I don't know, thinking about it. <laughs> it's funny. I know I've been listening to a lot of true crime lately and it's all in freaking Utah. Yeah. A lot of Mormons. God, yeah, it's all get crazy. Mormons. A lot of crack, crack. So how did you get into sound healing? How old were you? How did it all happen? Oh man, I don't, uh. Or like, well, like spirituality, like that kind of, like Reiki, that kind of Oh my of God, stuff. this is a big question. Um, okay, well, first of all, I've always been into music, so I played drums. I was in punk bands in high school, because <clears throat> it was like the, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, so yep. it was like Blink-182. Henry Rollins. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that was too hard for me. It was more of the, like, oh, the, the American stuff, Pie yeah. punk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so I've always loved music. My dad actually still plays in bands. He's like 70. Oh, nice. So, wow, he's a cool guy. Yeah, he runs in the family. Yeah, he's a weekend warrior. Oh, my God. Well, now he's retired, so. He, lucky, though. <laughs> work, like, any kind of work he does is on the weekend. <laughs> but no, um, uh, so that, it kind of runs in the family. And then um, I just always loved making music and recording and everything, all the stuff around it. So I think sound was always a big thing. 
And then, okay, so try to be quick about this. Um, I was like way into the Mayan calendar in like 2007, 2008. And like, you know what that is, right? Yeah. Like the yeah. end of the Mayan calendar. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. The end of the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that was like the cheesy John Cusack Armageddon. movie. But I yeah. remember um, going to New York City and people would hand me flyers everywhere I went about the Mayan calendar. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was my coming God. to an end. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so I got way into it. Uh, and then... Um, then you lived. I know, right? Well, my thing, I was always like, it's actually not, that's not what they really say. It's just the end of a cycle and the start of another one. Right. And it kind of coincides with the age of Aquarius. So it was kind of like the fact that it would overlap in different, like, uh, you know, disparate philosophies that never met each other was always fascinating. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, like it was always kind of about the idea of an, of an age ending and and a new one beginning and it's like 13,000 years long. So like, it's not going to end in a day. It's not going to change in a day. It's going to change in like a hundred years, like slowly, but I don't know. And then I just like had uh, you know, a spiritual awakening in, what was that? As, as one does like with YouTube <laughs> on YouTube in like 2011 True. and 2012 where like, you know, I was, I f- fell down the rabbit holes of nine 11 and JFK and oh like, oh, like, the, like the OG conspiracy theories <laughs> yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And, uh, there was another shooter. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, all of it. God, all of it. And so, and like the dollar bill and all the symbolism. Oh my God. Oh my yes, God. Everything, everything. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> give me the pyramid. Give yeah. me that. Give me the, the Illuminati. Eye. Give me the aliens. Jay-Z. Oh, I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> everything. Oh, I was Jesus. all into it. <laughs> the thing is like now I'm like, man, if I did that now, I would have been in a QAnon. Like I would have been, in, I would have been at the Capitol. I feel like, you know, cause oh it was like God. a dangerous, it's a dangerous thing to fall into. All right. Question. Do yeah. you know of the flat earth theory? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's ridiculous and dumb. First of all, <laughs> but what I think that they're getting at, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong. Like a lot of the stuff that they talk about is more about, being lied to, not really about it being flat earth. No, there's some people that believe in the flat earth. Okay. It's not me. It's my my ex boyfriend. Oh yeah. Okay. So And what they was... like to pick on me about it, but I don't believe in the flat earth. How we do you kept say trying it? to convince Matt and we're like, no, there's no Yeah, we would have fireside chats about flat earths oh, and uh, no if you didn't win me over, that's all. Yeah. When we were on a flight recently, we actually thought about taking a picture because it showed how it was curving crazy, as right? we're flying and we're yeah. like, wait, what the where the fuck are we if we're <clears> not <throat> going over the cag on job. Anyway, say how do you Tag even know? Job. Yeah. It's it, Anyway. But you're awakening. Okay, so sorry. after your spiritual awakening from yeah. YouTube, as we all have had, except for Matt, because Matt is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, tell us, how did you get into like this, like Reiki kind of vibes, like the the sound healing? The... Oh man, I don't know. I well, I it's it's the thing. It like started there, but then it took like a decade. Like that was 2011, 2012. So like really by 20. 19 2020 was like I was feeling more comfortable talking about it and just kind of like being weird and being okay with being weird and um we love weird because a lot of the stuff because like okay to answer your question about Reiki and everything it comes from for me it's actually extraterrestrial so like my thing is real into aliens Ooh. And there's a like I got into these like channeled texts from the you know these authors that would say they were channeling extraterrestrials into their book and stuff mm-hmm. and it was like whatever whatever it's like true or not it's still fascinating sure. and so I come from it from there and and in those books they talk about just your chakra systems and your body is was kind of like the most advanced piece of technology on the planet and we have no idea how it works all of it you know and to come and so Reiki is, is energy balancing the way that your body is built and like how it, the different chakra systems, like how they have to come together and they have to all be synchronous and always and like spinning. And and when you're in alignment, crazy shit happens. Like yeah. good stuff. You start manifesting. Yes, in my experience. exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the thing is too, you have to get, you have to be able to access emotion. And a lot of us, probably all of us, have had been taught to repress it. Push it down. Exactly. Just push it down. Drink more. Do more drugs. <laughs> Just forget. Run away from it. You know. 
don't feel anything. Exactly. So like, <laughs> yeah, I know. No, and, and, and emotions are like the key to manifesting, really. Emotions are the key to everything. Emotions, emotions like connect us with the spiritual world. So uh, by having emotions controlled on this planet, we aren't allowed to fully understand who we are and what we can do. <clears throat> and think about the news, like being stuck in fear is the lowest form of emotion. So it, Even lower than being angry, I yeah, hear. Exactly. At least angry you're empowered. Well, I, for me, I wouldn't agree that that was like another, like the second half of like my spiritual awakening was like after being that dude at Thanksgiving, telling everybody about nine 11. Oh, Lord. I did that one. <laughs> yeah. That went over well. Oh, it's great. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I convinced everyone at the table and I was, <laughs> God. Bravo. yeah, I know. No, but like after doing that, I realized that, uh, being angry just gives your power away. Like it, that's like. If you if you if you want to talk about like a they or like a whatever like Illuminati whatever it's like the 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 point is to keep you angry so that you give they your power control away you. yeah so and it took me a long time to realize that and falling into those rabbit holes getting really angry about the world angry about the evil in the world is just playing that game and and you're just you're being played you know so like you have to be to find joy, you have to be joyous. It's kind of the greatest form of rebellion, I feel like. So I like that. <clears throat> Matt's like, please adapt that. You're so, angry at that. <laughs> 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 well, see, for me, I like have to let my emotions out, and then I feel better immediately. But then other people are like still processing them, and I'm like, I'm fine. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Keep up. I, I'm going like this. <laughs> we don't know how to do that. We don't know how yeah. to express our emotions. A lot of it's really physical. Like there, it involves a lot of body movement, or like it doesn't have to be dancing, but like physical. Shattering a, a glass sometimes feels good, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's why rage rooms. Yeah, I love. Like, yeah, oh. we've been wanting to go to one. Yeah, I really want to go to one. <laughs> yeah, and it's like anyway. So, um, so that's the long answer to that's why I got in here because it was like okay. We're made to be angry. We're stressed out, but our, our bodies are like are, sto are storing all these emotions, and we need to let them out. So it's like sound healing, chakras, Reiki. That's how I got here. So just helping people relax. So how did you find out about sound healing though? Like how did did you like stumble upon it on YouTube? Because <clears throat> YouTube is where I find everything. I know, YouTube right? is like my mecca. It's, I think it's everyone's. And I can't tell what's a good or bad thing. I think it's a great thing if you use it right. But um, I don't know. I think it was all intuitive. It really was. Like, I felt like a vision. It was like a download. It was like an instantaneous, like, awakening of, oh, I want to do this. It was more of, it was more like I was, I received a message. And it was like, this is what you need to be doing. You know, like, I don't, sometimes I don't take a lot of credit. I feel like for the stuff I come up with, I'm just kind of like the antenna that receives it. And it's my job to just bring it into the world. And do you think it's aliens or do you think it's like a source power or God or a combination or <sighs> Man. something like that? I think, I think it's more of, it's just a, a version of ourselves outside of this dimension. That's like, whether you want to say it's more ascended or higher vibration, I think those are kind of dangerous terms. I don't, I don't know. I just think like when you talk about being high vibe, it's like, hey, you know, you can be low vibe too. What does this vibe talk about? It's right. it kind of everything's about vibe now. I don't know. It's it's, it's kind really of the buzzword bad. now. Yeah, but it's yeah. also like. It can be very limiting to be like, I only hang out with high vibe people. It's like, oh, God. Hold on. That just now means you haven't. Now there's high and low vibe people. <sighs> See, well, exactly. you can spot the difference, but at the same time, like, it takes, like, for me, I don't know, I'm speaking in weird terms, but like, if you're, in quotes, vibing higher than someone, like, sometimes it's good to hang out with them because it raises their vibration and they can. I don't know, like sometimes my friends or me, like we're acting shitty and I'm not just going to walk away from them. I'm going to help them or be with them. Yeah. Be like, and that's, I feel like that's what you do. Like you're, well, you're like the microphone delivering the message. 
That's or the megaphone You're lifting or something. people yeah. up I guess the microphone's the wrong word. making yeah. them feel better. Like Liz and I can attest. Like I feel, I was having kind of a bad day today and you made me feel better. Or, that means a lot. Yeah, I, I had neck surgery earlier this year and since then I've been getting dry needling. But honestly, this is like the least stress in my shoulders have felt. Oh my God. Oh wow. I love that. I, I, I will tell you honestly, like I don't know all the health benefits. It's just like I'm being intuitively led to just do it this way. I'm sure it also depends on the person, how open they are to the experience. Exactly. That's true. Yeah. Because if you can sit there and receive it in a way that you, that you can like, you can almost kind of take it and use it the way that you want. You know, it's like I'm just giving out energy. And if your mind is open to it, I feel like you're going to receive it better. Like some people like they poo poo stuff. They're like, oh, this is dumb. And they're not going to get help from it if they, but it's all about what you let in. Yeah. And I think Mm. plus with both of our music backgrounds, kind of like it helps to just like you were saying with yours, you know, Mm -hmm. so we're more in tune with like sound vibration, maybe Mm -hmm. even Um, like the interactive piece where we could hum along. You allowed us like, if you want to join in, you can like Liz Mm -hmm. and I love to sing. We like to hum and we can get on tune real quick. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. It's beautiful. And then like, that's kind of my, that's the vision that I was given was like a crowd of people, like a thousand people doing that, but like full throated, like they're really, everyone's singing together. Mm -hmm. It's not, but it's not really singing. It's just one note all vibrating together. And I think that would be so powerful. Well, that's like the meditative sound. Um, And they even have, they have so many songs about that. Like the moody blues has like, so many songs about that but it was oh, so cool. crazy how you could actually feel the vibration through you like i mean i can almost still feel it in my hands right now like you i everyone listening should try this yeah. because it really does work i think i feel high even though i haven't taken anything like i feel yeah. high from the experience for real in a really good way not like paranoia or- yeah that's awesome thank you um i, I love hearing about it can and, you talk more about like the crystals and what they do specifically? Oh man. Okay. Well, I wanted to say something on top of what you were saying. Yeah. Um, I forgot to say it when I started, but I think sound is light. It's just not visible. It's beyond the visible spectrum. Hmm. It's the same phenomenon. It's frequency and vibration and waves like light is. And, um, I think it's as opposed to it being a sound bath, it's more of like a light bath, you could say, where you're emitting these sounds in this certain way. It's really kind of like you're emitting light. And then when you have an intention behind the sound, like when you speak words with intention, whether good or bad, um, you're kind of emitting conscious light from your throat. You know, that was the part for me that is really important is like, Sound bowls are great. The music's awesome, but like it's the singing that really makes it. Because if you can get if you can get on board with an intention and then and then do the toning, you're kind of you're all emitting conscious light in just a way that you know you, you can't see it, but you can feel it. And I think that's where it gets to be really meditative and powerful. Is it's kind of like washing over your body. You yes, know? amazing. Um, and also, you're like actively partaking. <clears throat> Yeah. The experience, mm-hmm. like you're not just like listening, like you're t- taking part. It's like um, you're taking part, we're taking part, and you have the lights and you have the music. Like it's very immersive. Well, I appreciate that because I think that's the thing too is that like you were talking about with your hot yoga, it's kind of um, there's an experience, an experiential part to it that I think is it adds to it being really powerful, and I think that. I don't know. I think people kind of want that. People want to go to an experience, but then ha- walk away feeling like relaxed or very, you know, like high, like you were saying, in a good way. I'd asked, uh, like, what are the oh, crystals yeah. for? Or specifically, does each that one I have do like know, a power? I or? have my crystals and they make me feel things, but like, I don't know necessarily what I'm feeling. I'll tell you, I don't know all about them, actually. Uh-huh. Like, my thing is I go to a crystal store and I walk around and then whatever calls to me, I grab up and I buy it, you know, and for the vast majority of times, 
someone's told me what that was and it's like, Oh, that's what I needed. Exactly. You know? So I look at it more as being intuitive. Right. I know that selenite is really great for That's my favorite one. <clears throat> yeah. I had this really nice, it's like a kind of tower one. I don't know. I mean, it, they're all about kind of clarifying and protecting in different ways for me at least. Um, and that's it. Like, I think that goes back to light too, though, because um, you know, like you charge your crystals when there's a full moon, mm. um, or the sunlight, or the sunlight. Yes. Yeah, with incense too. And it's like on multiple levels, like lunar, solar, you know, Earth. Mm-hmm. And the Earth created them, which it fascinates me. I'm mm-hmm. like, look at this beautiful thing that the the Lord created. Talk about that nerve that you were talking about yeah, the during the Vegas experience. nerve and Vegas. Um, <laughs> what Vikes. happens in Vegas is Vegas. <laughs> and how people like fall asleep and stuff. Oh, okay. Um, as well. <laughs> so I think that what I found is the Vegas nerve that I've read about. It's the nerve that runs from our brain to our gut, and I, I should know more, and I'm learning more about it. So. I'm a if nurse, I mess it up, so okay. uh, I'll correct yeah. you. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, it determines whether we're in a certain response state. Fight or flight is one of them. They call it rest and digest is another one, which is just more of an at peace, uh, relaxed, nervous response. Um, the thing is that we are stressed out all the time, basically, because our body doesn't know the difference between being attacked by a lion and like an angry email or being cut mm-hmm. off in traffic. So uh, when those things happen to us, we get stuck in this fight or flight response and then we don't know how to get out of it. And the thing is like our body doesn't, we can't just kind of say it to leave. Uh, our body has to physically come out of it in a, in a certain way. And, and so back in the day when we were cavemen, being hunted by animals, you would have a chase and you would survive most of the time. And then there would be a way to get out of that nervous response and you go back to like grazing or whatever, you know I mean? And you can see animals go through that when they get chased as well. Anyway, we had the same response. Uh, but it's, it's more of like, because they can't tell a difference between like emails and animals we're constantly kind of being set off on these different, you know, triggers. Um, and so we're constantly stressed out. We're in this response pretty much all the time. We don't know how to get out of it. And we've gotten used to it to the point where we it's just kind of, we numb ourselves and it's really overwhelming. So that's kind of where like, addiction comes from. And I think at least, and, and just like, all the stuff that we do now is a, is almost like we're numbing ourselves away from dealing with our experience, you know? Uh, and so sound baths allow us to soothe that nerve using those frequencies um, in, in like an attempt to get us out of uh, fight or flight response. Now, from what I've done research about with the vagus nerve, it takes a lot longer than an hour to do It's a very in-depth process and like, um, you know, because it's taken years to get us here, it, it can't be done in an afternoon. It has to be done like intentionally over weeks, but there is a, there's this thing called polyvagal theory that, um, is great. This guy came up with it. He said he has this process called the safe and sound protocol protocol that actually uses sound frequencies in a very specific way to get you out of fight or flight. That's interesting. Yeah. What I've come across is that actually our middle ear has these muscles. And when we get in fight or flight, they tense up and, and it cuts out at certain specific frequencies. Like, because what's happening is we're in survival mode, so we can only be listening to a certain frequency to survive, which is like kind of around the human voice. So those middle ear muscles contract and they like constrict our hearing. And so the process of the safe and sound protocol is to like relax those muscles first. And then like, from what I've heard from people, like that's kind of when the emotional releases happen, these pent up emotions forever, like start to come out as your body comes out of this process. Like it's a very, very like in depth, cathartic thing to release all these emotions. That's awesome. I feel like um, we didn't do it long enough, but I feel like it could have come out of what we experienced today because I was 
I still feel weird from it, like in a good way. Yes. Coming out of like a good dream. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> As a nurse, was that? No, yeah, you were spot on. Okay. Um, it's funny. Uh, I worked at an ENT's office <clears throat> for years, and we would talk about the vagus nerve all the time because we had tons of people come in who were having active nosebleeds, and when you pack the nose, that stimulates the vagus nerve, and it's typically men who will pass out in response to that being stimulated. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Not many women pass out from it. Why do they pass We're out? We're used to blood. Because that vagus nerves get stimulated, and that causes them to just, like, keel over for a second. Like a fawn response? Like the freeze response? Yeah. Interesting. Because there's that part, too. People get stuck in the freeze response, and they just kind of disassociate from society. And then like, they turn white and, like, look like death, and they we have to tilt them back for a few minutes, and then... That's because the body is like, better, we're being yeah. eaten right now. We're going we're yes. to be eaten by a tiger right now, and we're just going <laughs> to die until we actually die. It's so weird how that's associated with hearing as well, though, because like I've had low blood sugar before, and when you have that, it makes it so like you can't hear almost. Interesting. That's how I feel. But also, um, if anyone has ever tripped before or done other things, it does affect your hearing. It actually makes everything, to me, sound like it's very like far away and muted almost. Interesting. So you're more like in your active experience that's happening like at the moment versus looking at stuff outside your environment. Oh, interesting. So. Okay. I think that's like tied in, you know? Yeah. Rick, I did want to know, um, who is your most frequent demographic? Who comes to see you the most? Like, what kind of people? Mm. Okay. This is fascinating. Um, <laughs> it's actually mostly suburban women from between 40 and 60. 40 and 65. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. You would For me, like, if I had to guess, I would think, like, young men in their 20s. Really? I don't think most men are into sound healing. But I feel like I a, a lot of like hippie men are. I don't know if they would actually go do a sound true, healing. True, true. I think they can't they're too it. lazy. <laughs> and they can't afford it. That's the thing. I mean, I've, uh, from the sound baths I've done, it's majority women, like vast majority. And then there will be some men, but they kind of... Uh, it's because we're from Venus. I know, right? <laughs> It's because you all take the, take the brunt of everything and you need help. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> Lord of mercy. <laughs> but uh, it's very rarely, yeah, it's, it's like 10% men, I would say. Wow. At the most. So what are the women looking for? Like, what do they want out of the experience? Okay, from what I've gathered, uh, it appears to me that a lot of suburban women in Richmond are going through spiritual awakenings on their own and they don't know what to do and they're having like they're either going through divorces losing their jobs uh, like humongous (laughs) life changes are happening and they're and they're kind of being woken up in the sense of like do I want to do this anymore like what do I want to do who am I kind of stuff and then this happened recently where this lady was going through some major life change her friend came out of town just to visit her and instead of sitting around drinking wine and talking about it, they just searched sound bath in Richmond. And then I came up for some, I have no idea how I do this. <laughs> I'm not, There's no SEO involved. There is. I guess there is. It's but the universe. It. Yeah, it's the download from the aliens. Yeah, exactly. So I came up and they hired me and, and it became this thing of like, you know, we don't, we don't know what to do. Uh, we've heard about mushrooms, but is that something that we <laughs> Should do? Should we take them right now? Yeah, like, and, and they don't know where to they don't know where to go who to talk to, and they find a sound bath guy, and it happens to be me. <laughs> like, and I'm almost like I feel like I'm like the onboarding person to like the awakening. It's like, oh, welcome. Okay, come do this, and then talk to this person about the mushrooms. You know, like <laughs> you should have a mushroom guy. Yeah, right, like, dog. My, my boy Rick can help you out, or something yeah. like. I know. <laughs> But no, I mean, it's it's really, really fascinating. Like, there's a lot of women kind of in their own little silos, not knowing who to talk to, you know. They don't trust YouTube like we do. 
<laughs> and and like they don't know where to go. And but they're having these major life changes happen. And I think also like post COVID, tons of people are like, okay, I now that. know like what life is worth, maybe, or like I'm shocked into. A, being awake and what am I supposed to do like, now? I don't freaking trust anything anymore. Like I can't trust the news. Like is the like for me? I know it's controversial, but is the vaccine beneficial? Like I don't like I don't trust anything anymore. Like yeah. for me, like I had my spiritual awakening. I think in two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen. But like the COVID, like sped it up because I was all alone. Mm, wow. Yeah, when you're all alone with your thoughts. Oh man! Anything with my cat happen. too. So me and, and my cat too. were like communicating, but like the way you communicate with an animal, like it's different. Obviously, with a human, you don't speak. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do. Yeah, but was your cat anti-vax or was your cat with a vax? <laughs> me and my cat are both anti-vax, oh, but we respect uh, vaxers. Okay, yeah. I have to because I'm an autoimmune. I'm a, but... I'm a pro-vax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think the vaccine is is important. You know, and like that was a fascinating overlap of like the super MAGA extremists and then like the spiritual community were both like, yeah, anti-vax. And it's like, yeah. hold on a yeah. second. You can't agree on anything together except for this. Like, <laughs> I agree. And I, 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 I mean, obviously I'll, def- I'm not going to defend myself, but like, I'll tell you my perspective. I just, I lived alone. No one just, I work at my house, like my job. I'm just with my cat. And for me, the vaccine just didn't make sense because I didn't really go out during that time at all. And I was really careful. And I did get COVID, but I just stayed at home. Like, I believed in COVID. Obviously, it's real. Like, I'm not one of those people that's like, COVID's not real. It really happened. But, like, I just isolated. Yeah. And I'm fine, you guys. I'm healthy as a horse. I think it goes back to, like, the placebo effect for me. It was kind of like... And like what we say, like if, if you're going to sit there and be angry, then you're giving your power away and then they win. So it's right. like, if you can sit there and be like, the vaccine is going to do what it needs to do. And it's not this conspiracy then it doesn't become a conspiracy. Like you can, you can create your own world in, in a good way, in a bad way. And so like you have just, it's important to realize like we have that power and I think we're, we're told not to. Well, and life is stories. And so yeah. it's almost like, what are the stories you tell yourself? Like I'm one of those people where I'm so easily susceptible that I'm like, I could tell myself anything and Me believe too. it. <laughs> like my other friend, Amy and I, we both always are like, damn it. If we're ever accused of murder, we'll probably confess. Yeah. Cause Same. we'll be like, uh, yeah, I, wait, did I do that? <laughs> Uh, maybe <laughs> I'm the same way. How is it with angel numbers? Does oh my god, one, one, yeah. one, one, That's all one. the 11, time. 11, yeah. One. What about you? Threes. Yeah. It's all about the threes. I wish I knew what that meant, but it's fascinating when it happens. It happens to me all the time. I know. I'm just like, I, okay. It's weird. Message received. What is the message? Or like, even at work, I see like numbers that make sense to me over and over again that no one else would know. Like, I see like my goddaughter's birthday is eleven eleven, and I see mm. that all the time. For me, I do know what it means. For me, it just means it's a way like whatever's out there, like call it my higher self, source, mm-hmm. God, the aliens, whoever they are. I'm on the right path. Mm-hmm. That's what okay. it means to me. Like this is like. You're you're aligned, like you're doing the right thing right now. That's how I take it too. Yeah. But back to sound baths. Oh, sorry. Um, let's uh, see. So, do you change your music depending on like if someone sets a certain atten- a, the intention? I don't. Or do you just go with it? Do you have like a set list? I know you were skipping over for us because we could only do thirty minutes. But um, like, do you usually do the same music or? Yeah. Do you mix it up? Or? No, I, right now I just have, I've found a good playlist. Yeah. Or a good set of songs. I will say East Forest is the artist. Oh, okay. Ooh, never nice. heard of that. He's amazing. It's the stuff East? that I, East, East. Forest. Okay. Yeah. He, uh, the album I was playing you from is called In, and he designed it. He wrote it specifically for people that are taking solo my mushroom trips. Oh, okay. so you put I it on. I thought it sounded familiar. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like it's it's designed to just it's you know I think spa music is kind of annoying. Like there's there can be better spa music, and so yeah. he made this a- entire album. If you listen to it all the way, it's help, really helpful for people like doing solo trips. Yep. And so that's where I take it from, and I think it's really helpful. Um, yeah, I mean 
right now I have a playlist that I like. It's all him. And it, the thing is nice about him is that his music doesn't change keys. So they, it'll stay resonating with the bowl mm-hmm. the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I realized like I'm at that point now where I need to make my own music because I want to be able to license it or like post about it and not be flagged. Right. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of coming back to my roots and I've got a synthesizer. I've got Ableton. I'm like making electronic ambient music for sound baths. That's awesome. And that's like, so I, I want to be able to have that album done like by April, you know, next year. Keep us posted. We'll have you back in London. Uh, oh. Do you have a recording studio or a way to work? I mean, you said you you do some sound engineering, so I'm sure you can record your own. Well, luckily it's all just into the computer. Yeah, you can record anywhere. Yeah. I Matt have, knows. I've actually got a Beta 58 is what I use for vocals. Oh, really? Yeah, I just yeah. got the Beta 58. I love it. So what's the funnest place you've done a sound bath? Oh. Or most interesting. Or like the craziest story. You set me up for something that's like pretty boring. You don't have any crazy Here's stories? One. Oh yeah, American Family Fitness. What? No. <laughs> oh man, Am hold fam. on. I know, what? yeah, just wait. No, like, I'm trying to think. American Family. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was way better. I, what I want to do is like, God, I would love to have a like a church, like a stone cathedral Ooh, with a, yes. all the resonant spaces. Like the, the monk stuff. Yeah. Right now it's like yoga studios. I will say yoga six in, um, what's the one near West end. They have the built in lights in the sound system. So it's killer. I did one oh, once there. Awesome. That was awesome. I bet actually here's a perfect time to plug Maya's belly dancing. Oh, yeah. I bet I she know. would be into a sound bath oh, for real. God, She's yeah. at the dance space um, in the West End in the she's, same strip um, as the Answer. She's a neuroscientist and she loves like connecting with whatever's out there. She she's just had voice analysis done and like found out she was low in certain vitamins and stuff like because of the she frequencies that her voice was in. Telling me about this machine. Oh my God. She go- goes to these, um, what is it called? Oh my God, I should know the names of these. Um, biohacking, that's what it's called, biohacking conventions. And she went mm. to one with her husband and she bought this really expensive machine that she hooks up to her brain like she puts these sticky things on her brain and it can read your brain waves and she was telling me that she wants me to do it with her for free which is i'm going to um we're gonna have her on the podcast by the way guys um but it like it helps you oh God, it's kind of like awesome. what sound healing does yes. it's kind of just getting you to the present moment yeah and relaxing puts you in a brainwave pattern yeah man okay so when she does it on your head can I do a sound bath? Ooh, while that'd you're be doing awesome. It? You would definitely do and see something what happens. like that. See what actually happens. And it shows like the brain activity. Like it shows you on a chart, like it lights up and stuff. I want to do it too. Maya. There's like, there's Maya. like alpha, Maya. gamma, <laughs> delta, theta waves. Yep. That, like they, yeah, that's other what she was too. talking about. Yeah, they have yeah. different wave patterns. Yeah. Ooh, I would love that. And oh, she just man. got the software that actually analyzes and is like, you are low on vitamin D or whatever. That like, how, um, that's how it says it. I don't know, but that's how I <laughs> hear it in my mind. <laughs> that's great. But check out Maya's belly dancing, everyone. She's also at Tangueros. Yeah, I'm sure you could rent that space too for you. That's a difference. Yeah, the dance space. Oh yeah, tons what? of different people rent there. They so. do the ecstatic dance there. Yes. Oh what? Which is awesome. I yes. want to do that. Oh my god. Yes. I'm doing that. Um, oh man, I want to give a shout out to the person. Go ahead. I know. I, I think it's. I, know, I gotta find it. <laughs> Hold on, let me find her name. S H E K I N A underscore S H A K T I. She's the one that organizes the ecstatic dances at the dance space. Do they cost anything for the listeners? I mean, it's out just, there? it's a, a donation. Donation, yeah. Okay. Oh, but nice. She has DJs. They put great music on. It's oh two hours God. long. It feels like church. Like oh you get all sweaty. That's awesome. You get all sweaty and stuff. So it's, it's the great. first Sunday of every month? Or? Oh, it's the 5th of November Okay, is the first one. So then the next one, the second Sunday after that. Anyway, so oh, whatever okay. that is. Like, nice. Okay. It's twice a month. Sweet. Um, all right. Well, uh, to wrap it up, where can we follow you and support you like to do a sound bath, all mm. of our listeners out there. The website is uh, thebell.garden. 
Right. Um, and then the everything else is the same thing. So Instagram's the Bell Garden, YouTube, TikTok. And of course, we'll link it up for our listeners in the show notes. We always do. We'll make it easy for everyone to find you. Thank you. And us too, because I'd really like to do that again. I would too. Okay. For shizzle. On the um, house. Yay. Oh my gosh. You're the best. Well, shall we move on to some funny questions? We shall. I have a funny one up my sleeve, Rick. Rick, if you could choose one song to play every time that you walked into a room, what would you choose? (laughs) Oh my God. The walking song. (laughs) Into the room every time. God, okay. I need to think about this. Like a wedding announcement? (laughs) I know mine. Uh... Okay, you know what? About Damn Time by Lizzo. Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's about yeah. damn time. Mine would yeah. be TNT by um, ACDC. Oh. I just love, I feel like that's such, such a good sign to walk into a room. Hoi! Yeah. Hoi! I like it. Mine would be Back That Ass Up. <laughs> You'd be even walking backwards. <laughs> yep. Uh-oh. I would walk it backwards yeah. with my ass. You're oh, wait, Matt. Ass. What was your. You was- oh, so uh, it's a very cerebral question and Mm. so i was talking to uh somebody about this and they say that bands currently tune to a a, a frequency of 444 but in uh, the olden days they turned to 432 and his reasoning was that the it's more pleasing to the ear and that back in the medieval ages, they used to tune churches and buildings to that just because it was so pleasing. Do you subscribe to that? Mm. That's a good one, man. Damn. Yes. That's a Big deep cut. Daddy. Deep cut. Deep cut from okay. Big Daddy. Because that's a that is a <laughs> it's a very niche rabbit hole conspiracy Jesus. theory to go down. Did you know about that at all? No, I haven't. I okay. did this know great. that. This is great. Okay. YouTube. Let me, yeah, exactly. This is YouTube. Oh, man. Welcome to a rabbit hole. If you search 432 versus 440 on YouTube. So so the, cons- the current conspiracy theory about this whole thing is that in the 30s, the Rockefellers influenced oh the God. World Music Tuning Organization <laughs> to change from tuning 432 to 440 for, for some reason. Dun, well, dun, they dun. did have their hands and everything. I know at that exactly, time, didn't so. they? For some reason, and so now, <laughs> then what? The, what people have researched is four thirty two is kind of like it's it's a harmonic of the earth, like it's a very natural frequency, you know. But four forty is very dissonant, and it actually makes people angry. Oh, so it's like. So it's the devil's frequency. If you get into that, if you go down the rabbit hole, it's like, oh, oh shit. the Rockefellers to the world to go 440. <laughs> so we get all angry and pissed off when 432 is the actual sound. So basically the Rockefellers are the people the Rockefellers. we should burn the rock, at the stake. I, I never would have suspected that. To so that, was, really? Was, I thought it was always Bill Gates. Exactly. <laughs> it always, it, 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 why not be Bill Gates too? Yeah, it can be. He's the, actually related yeah. to the Rockefellers. Yeah, the whole dun, thing, dun, man. Dun. It, is, it is fascinating though. Like 432 is one of those very natural frequencies <laughs> and it's kind of weird that you would change a wit. But like, I, again, I'm a recovering conspiracy theorist. So like. <laughs> same. Like, I love yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> so I like, it's fascinating. I'm not going to subscribe to some evil thing with Rockefellers and the Illuminati and blah, blah, blah. I don't give my energy to exactly. the evil entity. Mm. But there is a thing about that. And I do, I think the 432 is one of those, I think it's a solfeggio frequency, which mm. there's like only nine. I forgot the math and all this stuff. But like, there isn't a significance to it. 440 also has significance to it. But like, again, if you want to sit there and give away your power to the Rockefellers, have at it. You know, it can be angry or not. I'll Great question. Not. Thank you. God, that was deep. That was sorry. I, sorry. Thank well, you. I, I, I'm going to lighten it up. Everyone else has already answered this question, <laughs> but give me your favorite curse word or phrase involving a curse word. Oh, man. Okay. You so, grew up in Utah, so I don't um, know. It's probably it's something like, like, I'll be quick about this. Bitch. Okay. So I went, <laughs> well, because my parents, they... They were like, we're not going to send you to public school in high school because it's run by Mormons. We'll send you to private Catholic school. Oh, yeah. I was okay, too. nice, yeah. <laughs> Matt so, was too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so the bishop graduated us, and we, you know, the bishop of the Utah, whatever, Catholic thing. And um, they tell us how to, ride a, how to walk across the stage, and you do the thing, and you shake the hand, and you turn this way, whatever. 
And so, of course, I'm the only dude ever in the history of the Catholic school <laughs> to turn the wrong way after Uh-oh. I shake the hand of the guy and I get my diploma. And he grabs my hand and points me that way. And so as I'm turning back, I go, God damn it. Oh, right, in, <laughs> right in front of the bishop. Uh-oh. <laughs> and that is still my favorite swear word. I like it. So you like to use the Lord's name in vain. I know, all of them. Yeah. So that's a big fuck you to Utah. You yeah. <laughs> How could you? I know. All right, guys, let's move on to yes. Big Daddy. Yeah, drop it on us, Big Daddy. All right, and I'm going to drop it on you thick this episode. Oh, oh. Hugh Hefner. And so uh, today's topic is going to be the celebrities of Richmond. Ooh. And first, uh, we've already touched on uh, on this a little bit. And first, I'm going to open up with uh, Guar. Oh, snap. Yes, uh, Thank you, Matthew. And so uh, they originated in uh, Richmond back in uh, 1984, and they started as a an art project in VCU. Oh, shit. VCU, yeah. And it's so, Ram life, baby. Like uh, Olivia was saying, they are known for their costumes, their satire, offensive lyrics. Who, who would have known? <laughs> Very offensive. God damn Can it. I say one thing real quick? The sure. song that I posted on my Instagram, on my personal Instagram, was horrible, and I can't change it without deleting the whole post. And it's so offensive, and I didn't know. I felt so bad. Everyone go to her page. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and they're also famous for blood splatter throughout the show. And people will actually wear white clothing just to get the blood splatter. And so, you know, I've been to maybe two of their concerts, and yeah, they're, they're pretty interesting, I'd say that much. They're fun. Uh, so moving on, so uh, another famous band from Richmond is Lamb of God. <laughs> <laughs> Utah. <laughs> and so yeah. I'm actually not very familiar with their music, but they were formed back in 1994. My birthday. And, and uh, Municipal Waste. <laughs> Do we have any fans of uh, the the MW? Yeah. So they were formed back in 2001, and they're from Richmond as well. <laughs> so shout out to D'Angelo. Oh my God, who can forget that sculpted body in that <laughs> okay, video? So you, but you've heard about the D'Angelo bone, right? <laughs> no. It's that little piece of muscle. Oh my God, that's the, the best part muscle. of a guy. Jesus yeah, yeah. Christ. It's I'm like, yeah, bone. give it to me, baby. Uh, uh. So he was born 1974 <laughs> in Richmond, Virginia. Oh my God, it's all fours. It's kind yeah. of weird. And <laughs> speaking of a four, Shirley MacLaine. Ooh. Yes. So she was born in Richmond, 1934. Oh my she God! She was uh, an actress, singer, and author, and she won an Academy Award. She's still alive, so yes. <laughs> uh, so, do you know which movie she won the Academy Award for? So it's Terms of Endearment uh, back yes, in 1983 yes, with and, Deborah Winger, and she was also nominated for six other Academy Awards. So she's pretty. And you accomplished. know her sibling, right? Who was that? Warren Beatty. John McClane. No. <laughs> Warren Beatty. Also, oh. Dick Tracy. Oh, Dick. A.K.A. Dr- Dick Tracy. Dick yes. Tracy. Oh, everybody loves that, Dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so moving on to, um, so not from Richmond, but he used to play a lot in Richmond. And this is Dave Matthews. He frequent, <laughs> frequented the spot. He used to play at the Flood Zone all the time. I saw him at the Flood Zone. Underage. And, and so uh, that became a transition to the Have a Nice Day Cafe and Shaka Bottom. And now it's just some apartments, Shit you know. Home. So, <laughs> And uh, moving on to another famous celebrity is Jason Mraz. What? Oh, He's yeah. from Richmond? Yes, he was born in Mechanicsville, 1977. Yeah. And he used to also perform at the Flood Zone. It's true. And so he is currently on Dancing with the Stars, and he's in, oh, he is? He's in the top, yes. Oh, damn. Wait, does that mean his career is waning, or is he okay? Uh, <laughs> if that, he hasn't, if I've not seen some of his music for a while, but I really like a lot of his music. Yeah. So he's a good musician. Yeah, it's pretty catchy. Um, what about PB? You got her on there? I, I'm getting Hold to my it. horses. Uh, Elizabeth, <laughs> let so, the daddy have his moment. Do you guys know who Don Knotts is? Yes, he's the guy that was on Andy Griffith. Yes. Uh, oh, shit. I'm he used old. to play uh, <laughs> Deputy Barney Fife on the Andy Griffith show, and he lived in Richmond, Virginia. And of course, uh, moving on to Arthur Ashe, he was a famous 
tennis player. There's currently a monument to him on Monument Avenue, and he won three Grand Slam singles. He's the only monument. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, the one and only. And uh, Liz mentioned Pat Benatar, and she lived near Richmond, Virginia, and performed at Sam Miller's Basement Club in Shaco Slip. Oh, sorry, guys. I had to Pee. relieve, my, relieve <laughs> myself. Myself. It's just me pouring up some wine. And did you guys used to watch the show Doug? Oh, up? yes, yes. So, it's said here, right? Yes, well... <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> what? So Jim Jenkins, he's the creator of the show, Doug. And uh, he was, uh, you know, he used to live in Richmond. And there's several... Refer- That's insane. Several references to Mechanicsville in the show. Uh, and there, and also, they used to go to the Cloverleaf Mall yes. in the show. And they went to Moody Middle School, which oh is... Oh, my God. Oh where my stepdad, my Mike Newman, God. was a principal. That's insane. I did not know that. That blew my mind. Yes. Uh, so, there, yeah, there's quite a few references in the show. And moving on, Liz, this is up your alley. Oh. Olivia could be up your alley. Tinsley Mortimer. Oh, I know what? her. Oh, my God. Real housewife. She's yes. from here? Oh she was God. born in Richmond. Holy that is, shit. That is, not, that is not up my alley. She and dated Constantine Morales from uh, American Idol, by the way. Seen him multiple times on Broadway. Sorry. And uh, she has appeared on shows such as High Society and The Real Housewives of New York City. Yeah, baby. For all you Bravo fans out there. And this one is a little lesser known, but Hunter Parrish Tharp. <laughs> he, he was born in Richmond, and he has been in the show Weeds and the Netflix show Ratchet. <laughs> yeah. I'm boozy. And Hashtag so, ratchet. That is your big daddy topic of the week. Well, that was quite enjoyable. Matt, that did blow my mind about Doug. Yeah. I Thank know, you for I want to go back and we should rewatch it together. All right. Well, how about we move on to the restaurant of the week? When I have one. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, what's yours? Okay, so my restaurant of the week is MPM Tiki Bar. And they recently moved locations, so I'm going to say their new location so I remember, and you guys can remember too, <laughs> so we don't go to the abandoned building. Um, <laughs> 2451 Old Brick Road in Short Pump, Virginia. Not to be confused with the Yellow Brick Road. Okay, so what I recommend is their Crab Rangoon Appetizer. It's very, very creamy and so good and crunchy. Oh my gosh, I want it right now. For your entree, get their Pad Thai. It's huge! It's a huge portion. Is it huge? Or yeah, huge? which it's one is huge. it? Huge? Huge. <laughs> and it's delicious. It do- you know what's weird about Pad Thai, though? To be funny, like it does smell like... Doo-doo dog butter? food like it <laughs> smells like dog food but then when you eat it it tastes different so i don't know what that is but it's so good to eat but it smells weird <laughs> i'm not gonna lie but it, but that's every pad thai um for their drink for a drink i recommend their painkiller cocktail it's kind of like a pina colada i don't know the difference they taste the same to me higher alcohol oh okay painkiller way higher hence alcohol the name the painkiller all right hence the name thanks guys my alcoholic friends have my back Okay, and then also the reason why I recommend the painkiller is because they make their cocktails super fun. They're really decorative. They have flowers and umbrellas, and they're beautiful. Like they look like they're from like a really really expensive high end bar, which makes it taste better for me. I don't know. I just love a really decorative. You want the experience. A decorative, really high alcoholic cocktail. That's my favorite. Yeah. Liz. Um, mine is the Emerald Lounge. It is Ooh, the... Ooh, excellent choice. Is that the Tiki Bar? or brother Tiki Bar oh, of the Jasper. Um, I hope everyone has been to the Jasper. I talked about it earlier this episode, so get your ass over there. But also, come to Churchill and check out the Emerald Lounge. I can't believe we both chose Tiki Bars. We did. Um, it's located at 2416 Jefferson Avenue in Richmond, Virginia. 
So I got to say, they do a take on a Negroni that is excellent. You said it last time. And, well, I li- I'm a, a man that loves a good Negroni. And uh, what they do is instead of gin, they use rum. And so it's a, it's a really interesting uh, flavor combination. It was one of my favorite Negronis. Campari and the rum. Yeah, yeah it's surprisingly Take good. Butter. Um, well, if I were you, though, I would order the More Than Words. It also has a, mes- a Mexican rum blend. Mezcal. Poblano pepper, because I always love a little spice. Apricot, vanilla, agave, and lime. If that's not up your alley, why don't you try the draft cocktail, the El Diablo? That has <laughs> the devil. Rep- yes, that has reposado tequila, lime, ginger, and cassis. So it's kind of like a riff on a mule, but it's on draft, so it's good. Um, to eat. Their edamame actually is really good. It's the bomb.com. Um, wow. Edamame is the bomb.com? <laughs> I it, like edamame. It but can be. All right. Um, it had a really good thick, like, I think they reduced their soy sauce maybe. Oh. Um, so it's like thicker. Thick. I don't know. I like a thick sauce. I like thick anything. I know. Great. <laughs> You're preaching to the choir, baby. Um, then I would, so this place is more like small plates. So for a couple options, I would do the teriyaki shishito peppers mm. with soy sauce, sesame, togarashi, and lime. And then I would finish that off with the Spam Cubano sliders. Don't be scared by the Spam, y'all. It just adds a little je ne sais quoi Oh, yeah, and they it. love it in Hawaii. A little quabam. Yep, so it has spazam on it and then pulled pork house pickles and it's all in a king's hawaiian roll how could you do anything better Mm. than that especially when you don't know what's happening because your face is numb from those drizanks and they are quite potent potables they are pp with um, more than words is that like an extreme song yes it is is that why they did it more than words. Is that why it's called that, you it's think? All I ever... Uh, probably. All right. There's some 90s kids up in there by attending. Mm. Shout <laughs> out to you guys. I'm gonna first, we're gonna give it to our guest. Rick, yes. do you have any shout outs? Anybody in Richmond you'd like to shout out? People that are into Ray K that are into your line of work that you want to shout out? Um, okay. Uh, Yogi J. Miles. Okay. Is it um, local? Yes, okay. a juju frequency. These are all Instagram handles. A juju frequency. A juju. Um, uh, oh no! Is it good juju? Oh, it's mm-hmm. the best. It's uh, the that best guy juju. you were talking about, East. East Forest. East Forest. He's in. Yeah, he's he's. Kind he's of not here, but I mean, he's there's mission worldwide. <laughs> Hold on, let me. And just there's one more. Um, sh- yeah, uh, Shana Latia. Sacred Vibes Yoga. She's another Ooh. great sound bath person. Where is um, Sacred Vibes? So no, she's that's her that's her Instagram. Oh, right okay, okay, yeah. cool. And cool. she does great. She does the ones. She does the sound baths on stand up paddle boards on the river. Ooh, in the that's summer. awesome. Yes, we fantastic. should all go together. Oh my god, they're fantastic. That sounds really cool. So she's put Field together. Trip. Yeah, she put together the sound baths on stand up paddle boards. It's fantastic. Wow. Okay, Matt, shout outs. Oh, well, it's not a, a shout out, but it's a, it's a sad note, note or a sour oh. note. Isley Brewing has just closed. So any well. fans of Isley, uh, it was, I think, the first brewery in Scott's Edition. It was. So we'll never get Choosy Mother or will they still produce it? Uh, I think they're possibly moving to another format. Like they, they're kind of quiet about it. Oh, okay. Well, that's oh. hopeful. Okay. Yeah. That's hopeful. Well, okay. we'll keep an eye out. Um, I'll do my shout outs. Shout out to the RVA Folk Festival. We had so much fun. There was amazing bands. I can't remember the names, but they were so good. Um, shout out to Toto, the pilot, who we will be interviewing next year. The pe- person who took us on the uh, the Flight. Cessna Cardinal RG plane. Um, shout out to Guar. Shout out to X Cops, their opener. They were hilarious and really good music. Shout out to the National, my favorite concert venue in Richmond. And shout out to MPM Tiki Bar. And I will just shout out Carytown RVA in general because there's so much to do there and so many new places. Burton's just opened up. I haven't been, but that's supposed to be really good. 
Um, Lolita's is there. The Bird, you have your standards. The Jasper, of course, I'm shouting out. The Emerald Lounge, I'm shouting out. And um, that's about it. Until okay. next time. Next time, we will have Lisa from the Luscious Luscious Boutique. Boutique. The boutique. Um, the boutique. So we'll be talking fashion, baby. That means we have to go to her Stella and tell you what's up. Yes, I've been there, actually. It's really cool. Where did you go? They, uh, you cheated on me. No. Well, so Youthful Beginnings, the place that I get my dye sport, has a little uh, shop in there, and I went and I got injected with poison. Yikes. And I never <laughs> looked better. But, you look um, amazing. Yeah, so we'll be talking about her boutique next time and all things Richmond, as usual. So... Thank you so much, Rick. Yeah, we had so, you so much fun. Yeah, it's, and, it's been a pleasure. It was uh, fantastic. Thank you did you. an amazing job. When you release you. your own shit in April, we'll have yeah. you back on. And also, I think, group field trip for the paddleboard. Oh, you have been wanting to paddleboard. And yeah. I've been, so, I want a sound bath on a paddleboard. Sacred Vibes Yoga. You double double, double the fun. You mentioned you have a synth. I have a whole bunch of keyboards upstairs. Oh, no, Well, shit. that's what we're going to do. I right, smell a collab. And I yep. do want to say we really, really loved yes. the experience. Thank you so much. It was amazing. I can't get over it. I'm so happy. We're going to do Thank it again. So much. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I've never felt better. All right, guys. Until next time. Check us out on the gram, the the, the snaps. We're not on the... We're not on the snaps. Snap. But we're on TikTok. We're <laughs> yeah. on Instagram. We're on Facebook at olala underscore RVA. And go Sorry, ahead Snapchat's dead. Go ahead and comment on the episode. Tell us what you think, you know. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a poll of some sort, some spirituality poll. We'll do it. We'll do it. When was your awakening? Yes. What year was your what awakening? Year? Oh, yeah. That's a good... That's a good, that's a good that's 1886. Oh, no, see where you popped out. <laughs> 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 okay. Goodbye, everyone. Right. Love y'all. Bye. Love y'all.